Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we've got a special treat for you guys. Well, it's more a treat for us really, because um, as you can probably tell, we've piled on a few pounds. So we decided to buy some fruit to help towards like the lead up to Christmas. Mm. Um, I don't know about you, I can't be bothered to eat all then. It's a pain, all that chewing. So we've decided to come up with another plan. So we're going to make some cider. We've decided that's the best way. Let's get on. Right, so this is what we've got here. We've got um, apples. I'm not sure what make these apples are, but it really doesn't make a difference. We've got some pears. And we're just going to add some lime juice and some lemon juice. And then we've got two oranges there that um, we just had in the fruit bowl, which we're just going to put in as well. So we're going to keep the skin on, but we're going to um, core them. We're going to take the seeds out of these, so we're just going to halve them, take this bit off, take the bottom off, so top and tail them, and take the seeds out of here. And as I said, we're just going to peel these and use the juices out of the lime and the lemon. Okay, so that is it all cored, peeled, pipped, chipped, whipped, whatever. And then we've just sliced these and they're gonna go in as they are because this macerator will just literally squeeze all the juice out of it and then it will just chuck all the pulp through here anyway. So it's not an issue. So we're gonna get straight on with that and we're just gonna get all the juice out. What we're gonna do, because we're mixing all of this together anyway in the cider, it's just, it's gonna be all one amalgamated lump of goodness. We're gonna put it into containers and then we'll put it in the demijohns in a minute. Okay, so from all that fruit, we have got these two things. Each one of these is about five liters. So we've got around about 10 liters of fluid. And then that is the waste. And that is all of the waste we have. So that's really, really good. Um, and it's, it's fairly dry. It's, you know, it's not, it's not bone dry, but it's, it's close enough, you know? Okay, so this is what we've got out of the juicer. And it is quite, quite thick and gloopy, which is awesome. I'm going to give it a nice mix because it was in multiple containers when I was juicing it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some apple sauce, to, uh, apple, sauce apple juice to it. This is 100% from concentrate. There's no added rubbish to it. And also, while she fills them up with the old uh, apple juice, I um, had to make a funnel because we didn't have a funnel. Um, we used to. Don't know where it's gone. But it'll fit in the top quite nicely like that. Okay, so now that's all mixed up, it's a little bit less, you know, solid. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to fill the demijohns up. We might need another one, but I've got that off camera, which we'll sort out if the need, is, the need arises. But we're going to do this slowly with our makeshift funnel. So yeah, we'll obviously not get any, anywhere else other than in the demijohns. Okay, so how much of this do you think we're going to drop everywhere? I, when I say we, I mean obviously crystal, because I obviously won't drop it everywhere. Okay, it's actually more successful than I thought so far. Well, you can smell the orange, can't you? Mm. Would it be this colour after? No, it'll all drop out. It'll be a yellowy colour. Obviously, this is all the sediment. Yeah. This is where it all goes wrong. Mm. 
on to the next stage. Okay, this is the stuff I use, and I've used it a few times now. Now this is for sparkling wine, this is a champagne yeast. So I'm actually only going to use half a pack per demijohn. And we have only got the two demijohns, so that's awesome. Okay, I'm going to be pouring half a sachet in each, as I said. I'm just going to be very careful about it. I try not to let it touch the sides up the neck of the bottle. It will, when I swirl it around, it will actually um, stick everywhere, but that's not an issue. And to make this a sweet cider, we're just going to add sugar. Now, there's lots of different measurements and so on. Um, and I'm sure measuring helps. But I just pour it in until it's there. And it, does, it it's not really an issue, you know. Um, I'm going to pour a certain amount in this one and a certain amount in the other one. Um, one of the things I always say when making alcohol is the most important thing is actually cleanliness. Um, the actual amounts of stuff you do after that are pretty much up to you. Whoa. That'll do for that. Now with that amount, I, as I say, don't know how much it was, just poured it in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep an eye on the actual uh, process. And as it actually ferments, if it slows down the fermentation, I'll add more sugar, etc, etc. But I'm hoping to have this ready in about two-ish weeks for drinking. It could, you know, you can leave it for lots, lots longer. Okay, normally I, I make really, really strong alcohol, but we're trying to make this a nice, pleasant cider that's not to take the enamel off your face. So in about two weeks time, this should be done. Um, that's why I've only used half the amount of yeast I'd normally use. And also we um, are gonna just test it every day. And if it suddenly tastes really, really nice, you know, we've got the right balance of alcohol, right balance of flavor, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stunt the growth of the yeast and, you know, bottle it up, etc. cetera. Um, the longer you leave it, the more sugar you add, etc., etc. the stronger it will get to a certain point. Um, but what we want is we want that nice balance. Um, so it should be ready in about two weeks, possibly a little bit more, possibly a little bit less. Um, but we'll be back once that's done and we'll show you the next stages. Once the buns are in and tight, I'm going to swirl it up to just give it a mix, get the, um, the yeast and the sugar all nicely integrated. And I may add uh, water to this um, to um, bring it up to the top. I haven't decided yet, but I'll, you know, if you notice it's suddenly more full and I don't say anything about it, that's why I've just forgotten. Okay, back soon. It's about two weeks later and all the signs of fermentation has completely, completely stopped. We've got a fine layer of sediment that's building up in the bottom, but these are murky and we don't want that. We want to get a bit of this murk out of it. By the way, if you can hear bubbling, it's not from this. It's actually from another one I'm doing at the moment and that's banana based. So I'll, there'll be a link to that at some point, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put findings in this and we're going to hopefully bring a bit of this um, suspended sediment out, you know, and we're just going to sort of clean it up a little bit. I have had more luck with these ones from Wilco's in the UK than any other ones. I've bought lots of them. I've bought this variety and this didn't work at all. Um, and I've used that on ciders whiskies no <laughs> ciders various wines and i just didn't find it worked so these ones i'm happy with and they seem to work for me so that is what i'm sticking with now most findings come in a part a part b and what you do is you put part a in and then after a certain amount of time you put part b in with these i think it's half oh it's an hour um so basically you put part a in wait an hour put part b in and each time you you mix it all up so that you thoroughly mix both t um, parts together now this stuff well normally findings that i've used is a little bit like slimy so try and get as much of it out of the oh no one of, i can't remember which way around it is to be honest one of them used to be really really slimy and the other one isn't but i can't remember if it's a or b it's b Try and get every single drop into there. Now it seems counterintuitive, you know, we've got a layer of sediment here. Why mix it up and get all the sediment back in? But 
it will you need to mix all of this in so that when you put part b in and you mix it all in that they combine and basically as, as far as i can remember it but this could be completely wrong to be honest one part will bond to the actual uh, sediment in the in the solution and then the second part will bond to that and you know it drops out of solution but I, that might be completely wrong to be honest Right, that's the whole lot mixed in. It's a lot harder because this one's so full, but you know, that's how we like our alcohol, isn't it? Right, I'll do number two. Uh, sorry, no, I'll do this one and I'll be back. What I might try and do is a little time lapse of both of them, but we'll see. Okay, I did do a time lapse of that, but I don't think anything happened. Sometimes there's a drastic change. Other times, dependent on what's in it, there's just no change at all. So I think this was a time nothing happened. I will check it. If, if there is something noticeable, then I will put it in. Otherwise, I won't. But now it's time for the side B of the findings. And this one's the gelatinous one, I think. I always forget. It might have been a completely different set that I'd used. Who knows? We are nearly too full for this. Right, this is going to be interesting to try and mix, considering that is literally to the top. Um, I will have to mix that another way in a minute. But let's get the other one sorted first. Like I said, try and get as much of this in as possible. Okay, I have a wooden spoon to try and stir this, but this is going to get messy no matter what I do. Right, and I can mix this one normally, like swish, swish this one around. <laughs> right, I'll try another time lapse and see how that looks. Okay, so could, as you can see, we've got a lot of um, sediment that's dropped out of suspension on both of them. Let me just whoop the light behind them both. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, siphon out all of this into clean demijohns, and I'm gonna do that, that again. I'm gonna add some more findings again, and see if we can get a little bit more to drop out of solution. Um, we'll see how we get on. Right, this is just the part A of the findings, the second go round, and as you'll see, there is a huge difference. Um, I'm gonna put part B in now, and then I'll do a little time lapse so you guys can see it, so that hopefully this will be the final process before basically we can either bottle it up or inject it intravenously. That is a joke, by the way. Okay, the next stage now is the final siphon into either bottles. I'm gonna put it straight into another demijohn. Okay, so there you go. Quite an easy way to make yourself some cider and it's just ready for Christmas. So, follow us for more dieting tips. Although we can't guarantee this is diet proof, uh, after about three pint pints, you don't give a damn. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye, Bye for now.